Okay, we're now recording. Hi everyone, I'm Susan Blum, your fearless, intrepid functional medicine leader <laughs> in this time of COVID and the pandemic. Today is May 8th, 2020. Um, it's Mother's Day in two days. Uh, I don't know about all of you, but my mother and my kids are all over the country. Um, I've got, my mom is in Florida, my one son in LA, another son and his wife in Denver, and we've got a third son living here with us. And so um, I guess we'll have to do a Zoom Mother's Day this, this year. Uh, strange times we're in, and I hope you're all doing well. Um, what I've been talking about, probably I, I probably spoke about this last week too, is that I've been doing my morning meditation. I've switched into doing a meta meditation, which is a Buddhist kind of um, approach. And I'm using, it's where you repeat phrases to yourself, which is focused around gratitude and loving kindness. And uh, the many, many years ago when I was going through a tough time, uh, I got Sharon Sharon Salzberg? Yeah, Sharon Salzberg's books. Well, she wrote this great book called Loving Kindness. She's written a lot of books in all these years, but she's a famous Buddhist meditation teacher. And, um, and I practiced meta meditation for a lot of months uh, back then, but I've been doing, I started again about two weeks ago. And that's been great. And so in the mornings, I practice, uh, I do 20 minutes of meditation. I put my timer on and I just have been repeating these phrases and it's, may I be grateful? May I be willing, may I be loving, and may I be engaged. And if you Google uh, meta meditation, Sharon Salzberg phrases, those come up actually. Those are her more recent ones. She sort of, adapt, uh, it's been updated and adapted. And, um, and so uh, I've been doing that. And, it's, uh, and so if you're interested in learning those phrases and sort of what they mean and practicing this, there's all sorts of resources online and there are plenty of people doing online meditation classes. I mean, now's the time, actually, if you were ever interested in learning meditation. The, me the, the world's best meditation teachers are all online teaching classes. Um, so now's your time. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but for me and for Blum Center, you know, we're definitely much slower. You know, our schedules are not full. If any of you have ever thought about coming to see me or anyone else, now's the time. Um, myself and the whole functional medicine community and all the doctor's offices. I mean, I was reading a statistic that 30% of all primary care offices might have to close after this because people just aren't going to the doctor. I mean, we're all preoccupied with other things, which is why I have time to work on my blogs and my writing and talking to all of you. Um, but uh, so we, we all have some extra time right now. Um, and now, I'm, I want to be very compassionate and understanding for those of you who don't have extra time because you're working and taking care of kids and homeschooling. And there's a lot of people who don't have more time. But for those of you who do, uh, now would be a good time to, uh, to do an online meditation class. Go for it. And so I've been, uh, so some mornings I wake up, I'm feeling a little down and out, you know, from everything. Um, you know, I'm having my own struggles as well uh, with you know, mostly business, <laughs> you know, trying to make sure Blum Center, you know, sort of how we adapt and how we survive and how we change our, the way we're practicing and, and what's going on. Um, thankfully, we've adapted to telemedicine. And so we're up and running and we're just all seeing patients from home. It's just slower than you, much, you know, slower than usual um, for most of us and, um, and or understandably so. And so as such, you know, uh, it's there. That's just challenging, um, but gratitude. And so, f reminding myself of all that I have to be grateful for is just a great way to start the day, and it helps lift my spirits. The other thing to lift your spirits is to get outside every day. It's really gross in the Northeast right now, and we have some. What's it called? A bomb cycle? I forget the name of it. It's some vortex, Arctic vortex coming down. Like we need that right now. Like thank you. <laughs> right. So it's going to be, um, we're going to go below freezing here tomorrow morning. Um, and then we should come back and finally have the rest of spring into, we'll probably launch right into summer. All right. So there's my little personal self-care rant for the morning. Um, uh, but I'm happy it's Friday. And um, my commitment is not to work over the weekends anymore. And I used to do a lot more work over the weekends 
And so I'm reading books. And if any of you have a great book you just read, you want to suggest to me just a great get out of your head book, nothing too heavy, I'm listening. Um, you can post it here for all of us. So book recommendations. These are, this is the self-care strategies that we need to do. All right. Um, and so I see a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to jump on questions in a few minutes. Um, the, what I thought I'd go over today, there's really not much to talk about from the public health arena. Unfortunately, um, that'll just get me depressed because unfortunately our national public health system has been dismantled and we are not following any sensible public health um, consistent guidelines as a country. It's just all been sort of thrown to the wind and uh, no one's following any national guidelines. And so we're all left to the states to help us with figuring out what to do next in this public health crisis, which is what this is. It's a medical and public health crisis and dismantling the national public health, um, you know, leadership is just, I, anyway, it makes, doesn't make me want to move to another country, but we've got to have some sort of revolution to figure out how to make this work for us because we've all just been thrown to the wind. Um, that's my depressing thought for the day. Uh, the good news is we can each take care of ourselves. And so we're all being self-empowered. And so my goal, my, my focus for today is going to be, here's how I'm going to help empower you to take care of yourself from a public health perspective. Um, treatment, we know, uh, it looks like remdesivir is working, but unfortunately the federal government decides which hospitals get to use it. And so you're like out of luck if you don't live near a hospital that's been given any remdesivir to use. Um, how do you like that one? And so the Trump administration is in charge of deciding which hospitals get it. Um, so my worry is if you're in a democratic state, you could be in trouble. Um, so that's the good news is we might have treatment. The bad news is we don't know who's going to get it. And the same thing with vaccine development, it's sort of been decentralized. I don't know, but there's actually some very good news coming down the pipeline about vaccines. It's just not gonna help us right now. Uh, if you have any other questions about treatment and testing, we did a lot of that last week. I don't wanna spend any time on that. I wanna jump into supplements, okay? I'll just get too depressed about the public health part. Um, you know, my son's company told him that they're not gonna be going back on site to work till September. And I'm wondering if I should open my office this summer. Um, and it's only May, you know. So, so today's not, not, a, not a good day for optimism, for reopening and having confidence in venturing out again. Um, and so that's, that's, sort of, that's sort of the news. And um, okay. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to, um, I'm going to we're going to talk about supplements, okay? Because I want to update you on what's been going on with supplements. So the first thing before I show you the lists. So here's the thing about supplements. At the very beginning of, so, so we're going to talk about what you can do. This is what you can do and how functional medicine can help you, okay? Because at the end of the day, we can't count on just public health officials and our, our elected officials. They're not going to save us. There's no savior out there. And, and I remember feeling that way um, that very, very, very first, it was mid-March, the very first press conference when I realized, oh my God, nobody's home. This is the second week in March. No one's getting it. No one's doing anything. And I sort of took things into my own hands. Well, here we are. We're here again. So you're going to take things into your own hands. We have to teach you how to build resiliency so that your immune system is strong. Basically, there's a good chance that we're all going to end up getting coronavirus. We easily could. So we have to prepare for getting it because it looks like everything's going to be open. It's, it's probably going to rip its way through, through our country, more so depending on where you live. And so we have to prepare. And so how do you prepare for getting it? And this is what I told you last week. There's the virus and then there's the host, which is you. And you can control how your body handles it. And that's why I want to talk about supplements today. In addition to supplements, um, the other piece to there's the supplements you could take. And then there's going to be you as a host, which is your terrain, that immune terrain that I talked about in my book I wrote seven years ago, my first, the first copy of that book, 
um, the first edit was in 2013, and it was how to have a healthy immune system. So it's how you're eating and how and your supplements, very important nutrients. So that's the focus. But then there's stress, and that's why I opened up with meditation. And then this is a good opportunity for you all to take a meditation class and learn to relax. You have to. The whole stress system is critical for the functioning of your immune system, terrain, your ecosystem. We want your immune ecosystem to be really healthy. That is my expertise. That is my focus for you. Immune health, ecosystem, terrain, food, supplements, stress, gut health. Healthy gut is a healthy immune system. We'll talk more about that later and, and on and on. So immune health, uh, gut health, and then lowering your toxin load, right? Toxins can cause a lot of oxidative stress in the body and damage immune function. And so cleaning up your world, you know, and um, yes, cleaning up your world, exposure, but that's where nutrients come in e and eating, eating in a way that helps support your liver. That's a lot of fiber and antioxidants and vegetables and plants, helps your liver detox, right? Choosing organic when you can. We do have a, uh, you know, food supply is a little, is getting a little challenging, getting everything you usually get, but so far not too bad, right? But mostly eating plants is going to really help. Um, the pollution is improving because we're all home, um, but you can learn more about this. You have, if for those of you who have time at home, you can learn more about this. My website, BlumHealthMD.com. I have a website. I have a Blum, a Blum Center for Health website, which is our health center. And then I have a whole online platform where I help you do all the steps in the books. So I have all sorts of downloadable information about toxins. Um, I have online pro do it yourself detox programs, do it yourself, heal my gut programs. Um, and so you can go learn more about that stuff in on that platform. That's lifestyle. We're here to work with you in every which way you need to. But let's talk about supplements and what you can do. We have to help you arm yourself with what you need. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and, um, and we're going to do that. So here is my, so come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, that's not how I want to do that. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm still recording. Yes, good. So there are three categories of supplements that I want to share with you. Now, um, uh, this is my update from the uh, Institute for Functional Medicine this week. Uh, it's in the past two weeks, but they did a whole webinar, but they put out a whole guideline for supplements. Um, so this I'm using to replace my earlier recommendations that the University of Arizona was like right out quick um, with their recommendations at the Andy Weil Group. And now IFM, which is really my organization that I study and follow, and I'm, I'm on the sort of thought leader or kind of front end of that organization, um, they uh, put out their recommendations. And what they did was they went supplement by supplement, and they gave their recommendations with the amount, but not only, but explained, gave all the re articles um, to some, the research to support it, as well as uh, general recommendations for dosing and address those issues about the ACE receptors and about cytokine storm. And so the first thing I want to tell you before we start reading through these lists is basically the general, the consensus of the community at that very beginning when those first few weeks of COVID, when there was this little bit of panic about taking supplements that could um, make cytokine storm worse in some way, that's all been debunked. Nobody thinks there's any supplements that are going to do that. So we've taken off the worry about recommending supplements that it could harm you in any way. Um, for these, for all these supplements, they are we've all the consensus is amongst all the integrative practitioners. And now, mind you, I also want to say these talks that I'm giving you, this is not medical advice. I'm giving you general education about what I've learned and I'm sharing it. I am not giving you medical advice. I'm not telling you you have to take these things or that you should. If you're pregnant, you definitely shouldn't take these things without consulting with your um, uh, your OB or your midwife or who's following you. Most of these herbs are not good for pregnancy, um, or some of these for sure. Um, and so, you, you know, these these are just general information I want to share with you that came out from IFM this week, and um, general dosing recommendations as well as 
the, the understanding now that we're really not worried like about elderberry, for example, in cytokine storm. It's such a good herb to take for the immune system that there's, we really don't think you should stop taking it. Uh, the same thing with vitamin D and this whole thing with the ACE receptor. We're not, all of that was theoretical at the beginning. And I have not seen, and, and really it was addressed head on by IFM um, and a whole explanation for why that really doesn't make sense. And so everyone should choose what they want to do. And I leave you to do that. But here are the supplements and how they work in the body. And generally, what I'm going to suggest that you do. And I know you're all going to have a lot of questions, which we'll get to. So beta-glucans are um, extracts of mushrooms, right? So the mushrooms are general, when you get a mushroom supplement, it's just a general extract. It's like mushroom extracts. And so the dosing is very different depending on what supplement and what the blend is and what, so it's hard to tell you how much to take, but you can do the whole mushroom extracts or you can do very specific beta-glucans, which are, um, <clears throat> when you see, you'll see it on an ingredient list, it'll say beta-glucan. Uh, and those are basically made from the cell wall of the mushroom, let's say. And so um, there was initially a concern about beta-glucans being too stimulating. There's really, that's sort of gone out the window. And most, I haven't read anything else about that. And uh, the general consensus is beta-glucans are just fine. And so you shouldn't take beta-glucans and mushrooms. You can choose one or the other. I don't, I, there's no reason to do both. They're sort of redundant. Um, <clears throat> so some of you, if you see beta-glucan in the list of the ingredients, then, then you're good. Um, and acetylcysteine we talked about already. There's the dose for that. These are supplements. So the, everything on this list Su support the immune system. They boost the immune system's functioning in an antiviral way. And so everything, so, uh, so generally as we're going through this, I, I, I think as we, as in insanity, I'm not telling you to take everything on this list, but I am telling you to choose several things on this list and take them because you want to take things that are going to boost your immune system. And so for sure, vitamin D is, a, is, a, is given. Um, I say here 5,000 I use in absence of serum levels. If you don't know what your blood levels are, no one's tested them, take 5,000 a day. Um, if you, during this time, 5,000 is my regular dose that all of my patients generally take. There's very few people I have that take less, even though I am measuring their blood levels. We want your blood levels to be 50 to 80. We really want to push you over 50. So 5,000 is actually the dose that I generally recommend, unless you've had blood levels, um, done, and you know that you should only take 2,000, for example, to maintain your blood levels, okay? So vitamin D is a given. Um, vitamin C, to me, is a given. So, you know, you everyone should be taking vitamin D. Everyone should be taking vitamin C. Vitamin C, like you all know from last time, my last week's um, office hours, we, uh, you know, vitamin C has been studied in China. It's being given in the hospitals here. It's, it's really well studied as an antiviral as well as an immune boosting supplement. And so, um, so I think vitamin A, D and C are, you know, everyone should absolutely take. And then you can choose in here what you want to take. Do I think you need to take all of this? Absolutely not. Um, usually for me, my favorite thing I add in is some sort of mushroom. Um, we happen to just really like mushrooms in our office. Um, it's just flu season. It's just a go-to for us. Um, if you're already taking that, great, or you want to add it, great. Um, if you're taking elderberry, great. If you're taking a blend that has many of these things, I love vitamin A. I usually use a separate vitamin A. And if you feel like you're getting sick, like for antiviral, I use vitamin A a lot for people who, uh, at the, you know, especially if you feel like you're getting sick, it's a great one to add on. Okay. So, um, but these are all immune boosting, right? You definitely want to take several of these, right? This is prevention, right? This is going to prevent you from, if you get the virus, it's going to help you keep it at bay, not get as sick. Okay. So some sort of mushroom, vitamin C and D, you can add A, you can add elderberry, you can add NAC, but I don't think you need to take all of these. Okay. Seriously. Um, especially because I also want you to take antiviral supplements. And so these are the supplements that, um, uh, you know, these are, these are supplements that all are known to have antiviral activity. 
Now, um, zinc is also, so zinc is something to definitely take every day. You know, I've been saying that zinc will help if you get sick or you get exposed to the virus, it will help you right there. So zinc will accumulate in your body and you'll have a zinc level in your blood. And so that's why you should take it now as prevention because you'll have levels of zinc in your blood that will protect you if you happen to bump into the virus, right? All of these other herbs will not are not as much for prevention right because they're going to act when you're taking them in an antiviral way um, whereas zinc will provide you high zinc levels in your blood so from this batch i would say definitely take zinc in an ongoing way um, and then any of these you could definitely layer on they, they you know they also have some immune support activity so I still think that it would probably be good to continue to take curcumin, which is really one of my favorites because it's anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, it's, it'll support your immune system. So, you know, from this list in a prevention way, I would say curcumin and zinc would be my two um, favorites. And then the other, if you get sick, you can add on as needed because they will have direct antiviral activity. Um, this other list of supplements are studied for, you know, we talked about that cytokine storm. It's this thing called the NLRP3 pathway. It's the inflammasome that gets activated when the virus, if, so what happens if the virus starts running amok in the body and does not get sort of quenched and if it doesn't have sort of a lid put on it when you first get exposed and it replicates out of control, too much um, viral activity and too much, too many, too much vi high viral load um, will stimulate or can stimulate this inflammasome. It's called, which is just, and it produces all these cytokines, which cause tissue damage. And these are supplements that this whole list of supplements are known to reduce cytokine storm. And so these are things that if you got sick, you would definitely want to consider layering in. Now you're already taking curcumin because that's antiviral at the same time. Melatonin has, is a great addition. It'll help you sleep in addition to um, having a reduced cytokine storm. But this is where like adding in quercetin could be really good, right? Because quercetin will help suppress the inflammasome at the same time that it also has some antiviral activity. Um, so these, these four that have antiviral activity plus reduced cytokine storm are really good keepers, especially if you get sick. Um, and so I wanted to put these up for you. Um, so, so I want to talk, I want to answer questions now on these. All right. And so th th these slides I'm going to put up for you when, when I post the, uh, so you, as you all know, my Friday office hours are recorded and we post them. Okay. Uh, in, um, they go into the YouTube channel. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm taking all of these. Actually, let me come back here. Um, let me stop sharing for a second. Actually, before I stop sharing, I just wanted to also point out, well, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be a little bit nuts here. Okay, before I move on to that slide, what I wanna tell all of you is I was trying to figure out how to provide this information for you so that it lives in a permanent place and you don't have to worry about writing this all down while I'm doing my Friday office hours. And so I spent the morning, remember when I, was, I, when I started recording, I said to everyone, oh my goodness, I'm running late this morning because I started working on this. I'm revising my blog. And so most of you know on BlumHealthMD.com, the website, the online website, uh, the online platform, uh, I have an ongoing blog where I keep updating my supplement recommendations. I'm putting all the, these slides are going into the blog. So by the end of the day, I'm going to have the blog updated. And by the end of the day, we'll have the, um, the link to it will be posted where this recording is. And probably I'll, I can even ask Sarah to send out a, a, a link, you know, or an email to everybody that's on this list um, so that I have a permanent place to leave you, right? So I'm going to have a permanent place. It'll be on the blog. Go look later. If you're not sure where the blog is, just it's BlumHealthMD.com. Okay, there we go. Um, so before I come back and stop sharing, I did throw this slide up because I do want everyone to know that um, there's all sorts of ways that we're trying to figure out how to be helpful, okay? Um, and so this is, does this say Blum Health MD up here? Yeah. And so we do have, so this is, um, we sell supplements on Blum Health MD. It's not all our supplements. It's just our private label stuff 
that it works with. But if you're interested in ordering any stuff on there, well, you can use Immune 10 at checkout. We do have a, a sale going because we wanted to just make it easier for everybody. So you do you can go into that website, BlumHealthMD.com, and put in Immune 10. That's where the blog is, and it will be up there later, okay? I want to remind everyone, and a lot of you have been taking advantage of this, and, and this has turned out to be really beneficial um, and helpful. People are really giving us great feedback about this. We, have, we created a new consultation category called, you know, our immune support consult. And it's only, it's 45 minutes. You can choose either Elizabeth Gregg or you can do Pam Yi, um, our, one of our physicians. Um, Elizabeth's are $295 for the 45 minute immune support consult. We can go over all your supplements, help you choose, go over your concerns about your immune system and about what you're doing. Um, it's a great thing. And if you decide you want to become a new patient, you can actually apply that towards our becoming a new patient. If you decide you want to keep working with Elizabeth or whoever you use for the immune support consult, it can get applied. So this is, we wanted to create a low barrier for entry for anybody. And this is, if you're a new patient or if you're an existing patient, just, you can just call and say, I want to do the 45 minute immune consult and just check in with us. We're here to help you. The other thing is, I do want to point out that Melissa, our health coach, is who is amazing, and most of you who have worked with her will agree with me, um, but she's available, and you can choose health coaching on the website, you can sign up virtually, or you can call the office, but talk about all the lifestyle stuff that you have to do, and she's excellent. She actually, um, Melissa does our uh, detox groups, uh, if you're concerned about toxin load damaging your immune system, she does all my Heal My Gut groups, as well as my um, immune and arthritis challenge program. So, so if you want any help, if you need support, if you want to help, need a little help figuring this out, we're here for you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to jump to questions now. I see it's 1130, but hopefully this won't take us forever. <laughs> I'm sorry. These, these, my classes end up being 90 minutes. Um, and it's just because there always is stuff to cover and then there's always is stuff to say. All right. So let's start at the top. By the way, those of you who are listening, who put stuff on the Q&A, please post it into the chat, okay? Um, also, um, and we'll see whether I, I get to it. And I see people are raising a hand. I don't know how to do that. So, and raising a hand means I'm gonna actually answer somebody live and we're not set up for that. So I'm just gonna start from the top. I need to have my exterminator come and I'm anxious about it. I know he should wear gloves and a mask. What other precautions should we take? Thank you. Um, so, I've been thinking, I have a mouse scurrying in the walls in one of our rooms, and I've been thinking about having the exterminator come as well. And so what I would suggest doing is the exterminator is going to wear a mask and gloves. And then what I, the most important thing is just stay far away from the exterminator. I don't know which room they need to go to if they need to come, first of all. I don't know what you need. Let me just back up by saying, why do you have an exterminator coming out? I, mean, I just need someone to find the mice and trap them somehow. But this, you shouldn't have anyone spraying any toxins in your house. If the ants are coming in, you can get ant traps that trap the ants and just put them around the house yourself. Do not spray any toxic chemicals. You do not want someone coming in and spraying around your house. That's the worst thing you can do for your immune system. Um, and so, I don't know why you need an exterminator. So let's start with that. Um, pesticides, herbicides on the grass outside, forget it. Pe herbicides, or I mean pesticides in the house, forget it. Bombing your house, forget it. If there's something very targeted you need the exterminator to come do, then just do not be in the same room as them. You know, let them go into whatever room. If they have to walk around the house, I can't imagine what you need to have done. But I would try to limit them. Do not stay in the same room as them. Everyone should wear a mask. And um, I would just, um, if you really have to do it, I would air out the house um, after they leave and just air out the windows. Try to, you know, ideally seal off the room that they're going to be working in and just air out the room and don't go in there for the day. Um, you can go in yourself and wipe down all the surfaces with a mask on after they leave. And, um, and try to avoid using that room. If they have to go around the whole house, you just don't want to be in the same, uh, you don't want to be in the same room with them. And then just, you know, find out from them whether they'll be touching anything. They probably shouldn't need to. So I, I'm not quite sure what the exterminator will be doing, but it really does speak to, if you have to have someone come into the house, 
how do you protect yourself? And that's sort of how we're opening everything up now, right? We're moving into this world of we're sort of opening a little bit. And so I would say to avoid having anyone come into your house unless you really know where they've been or who they are um, and avoid coming and try to limit how much of the house they have to travel through. Um, and so, and just don't go in the room with them and try to stay out of the room and quarantine off that space for a day to let the air settle. And then you can go in with a mask and just wipe down everything. And I think, you know, I, I, you, I assume, I really believe you'll be fine with that. Please fr say the phrases again. And where did I go online? I went online to Sharon Salzberg. I just Googled and I said, uh, Sharon Salzberg meta phrases, M E T T A phrases. And it came up. And so, um, it's, um, may I be grateful? May I be willing? May I be loving? And may I be engaged? And she gives a little blurb about what each of those mean, you know, gratitude and loving, we can assume what they mean. You know, willing is, it'll mean something different for each person. You know, may I be willing means something different to me than it might mean to you. And my, may I be engaged. But in some way, you know, the engaged is very interesting because it's very much about may I be engaged in the creation of my own karma. May I be engaged in the creation of my life, you know, and, and stepping into what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, like that kind of thing. You know, may I be actively engaged in my life and my, the creation of my life. And um, really powerful words when you sit and you, um, and then may I be willing, you know, willing to see what you need to see, willing to do what you need to do, willing to, um, to do the hard stuff, you know? Uh, and so, so yeah, love that. Um, could you discuss this new multi-system inflammatory disease that's affecting children, symptoms, duration, danger, lasting effects? Um, I'm not the person really to talk about that. Actually, I'm not that familiar with that disease. It's called Kawasaki. Um, but basically, you know, what we're learning about the, you know, so I'll give you a little bit, but I'm not all that. I, I'm not your gal. Um, but I, but I can speak to it somewhat. Um, what we're learning is that the virus is very tricky and it looks like it affects a lot of different tissues. And one of the things it definitely affects is the endothelial cell, the lining, the cells that line our body. And that's our blood vessels. And this is where um, a lot of other adults are having this too, because we're, we actually are wondering whether the blood vessels are part of the problems in the lungs, right? It's not just the alveoli, it's that the inflammation is happening in the blood vessels and that there are little clots that are coming in and blocking the blood vessels due to that whole inflammatory process, like in the blood vessels. And so in children, it might just be manifested like this. So in everybody, um, the same insult shows up in a different way in a lot of ways, depending on your genetics and you as a host. And so this is what we're now seeing in some children. Don't forget, there's probably tens of thousands of children who have been infected and there are 75 of this. So it's very rare. It's not a common thing, but it is a new, we're going to learn all these diseases that are associated with COVID. And this is emerging as the one that the most severe form or the most severe disease that the children are showing up with. And so it's a blood vessel disease. It's inflammation of the lining of the blood vessels. And so it's um, the concern, the biggest concern, well, once they, um, is that you can have permanent damage to the heart if the heart um, gets choked off from, from oxygen, sort of like a, a heart attack, right? But you can get damage to the myocardium. And so the concern is in the long run, it will, you know, you want to catch this early and it's treatable. The kid, you just have to get to the hospital and, um, and get treated and children are all recovering from it. And the faster you treat it, the more you prevent any kind of ongoing damage to the heart. Perhaps we'll offer special rates to new patients, a, mic, a mini consult, um, Vortex. Um, special rates to new patients. Yes. And so, oh, so I think Stu is responding when I was saying that our, our, um, our, uh, that we've been less busy at Blum Center, you know, all of us. And uh, I think it's part preoccupation, but yeah, we're looking at our rates and we're trying to think of doing the right thing. You know, if that's what it, people need, then, then for sure. For new patients, we are, we already, as soon as this started, we, we offer, we have a 10% off for new patients. 
um, we, we did that right off the top. And so that we've been running that since the beginning because we're doing new patients via telemedicine. You know, now in this age of COVID, we can do telemedicine. So, so Sue, I appreciate that, um, that sort of suggestion that we reduce our rates to new patients and that way we're bringing people in. So we're doing that for this immune consult. It's a very reasonable way to get started with us. Um, and, uh, and then all of our new patients, we've already reduced 10%. And now I'm also looking at other ways we can um, lower our rates and maybe go back to our 2018 rates, you know, something like that. I, you know, it's really also, uh, I, I'm wondering if it'll really make a difference for people who are really preoccupied and struggling with like the future and uncertainty. Um, and everyone's just preoccupied and, and sort of a little frozen in place, I think right now. Um, but I also, you know, but, but whether or not it will change anything for me is why I'm thinking of doing it for us, because I just feel like, um, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. It's just, we're in this together. So let's all figure out a way, um, to, you know, to make our services more accessible if that'll help, you know? So, yeah, so we are, we have done that already and we're trying to figure out what else we can do. Um, Cytokine vortex, just joking, I know. My husband had surgery last week to remove the tail and body of his pancreas due to pancreatic cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, that's hard. His, his oncologist, um, but if it's in the tail, that's good. You probably know that. Um, his oncologist wants him to start chemo soon. We have a meeting with him on 5-11, but I'd like to find out more about proton therapy, which seems to be less invasive and more targeted. What do you think? Um, okay, so. This is, you are the right person to go and get a consult from Dr. Yi. So Pamela Yi is at Blum Center. She's one of our physicians. She does integrative cancer. She's, she's our cancer doc. She will help you navigate treatment, what to do, other options, how to navigate getting chemo right now, how to support your immune system during this time. So, and actually we have a, she's writing, a, her blog should be going up next week. Uh, she's writing a whole blog on cancer, um, and we're going to post that next week. And so schedule a consult with her. If you want to get to know her and do an immune consult with her, she you can do the immune support 45-minute consult with her, um, just to even talk about, or your husband can, um, just to talk about his immune system at this time, and you can ask her what she thinks, but you can apply that towards becoming a new patient if you like her, okay? So that's what I would do. Um, going to my daughter's house as she and her family have quarantined as well as me. However, she is having a contractor come to her home. He will wear protective gear. If I wear a mask, would that be safe? I'm in my 60s. These are all really tough questions. Um, I would say to quarantine yourself from the contractor and quarantine the contractor from you. Um, and, um, and yeah, and I think that's the next step. I think in order to open up a little bit, we're all going to have to take steps to get comfortable with expanding our circles a little bit. Um, you're going to have to decide that for yourself. We're still struggling with those decisions here. I haven't let anyone else in the house yet. So I've been saying, well, after May 20th, when Cuomo, when New York opens up, you know, I'm sort of pushing everything to June to see if things will still calm down more. It depends on how active the virus is in your community where you live. If you're in the middle of an epicenter and, and it's very, very active right now, I wouldn't let anyone in the house or for you, you might not want to be there. Or you can quarantine yourself in the house when the contract is there. So again, what I talked about, about the exterminator, there's so many factors. So I can't tell you specifically what you should do because it's, you know, how active the virus is in your community right now. Um, and you can definitely quarantine yourself within the house away from that person and quarantine that person away from you. Um, and that's, that's up to you. And I think we all have so much fear that, you know, it's like overcoming that next step of, of allowing, you know, people with masks and being, you know, near people that have masks. Um, the areas that the, the contractors were, so I don't, it, I don't know how extensive, if it's the whole house, how much work they're doing. It sort of depends on that as well. Um, my adult children would like to stop by and visit on Mother's Day. We have set up chairs 20 feet apart. Is this enough? I think so. Um, we did go visit my mother-in-law in her apartment in the city, um, my husband and I. I mean, my mother's busy. My mother's in Florida, but they're doing like golf carts separated by six feet. I think that's 
proportions are good. And I think if you all sit outside and you're all far apart from each other and the children um, and they're adult children, I, I really think that's okay. Um, everyone can wear masks. Um, well, if everyone's been quarantined and everyone's okay, you know, you can expand your circle that way too, if everyone's been quarantined. So yes, that's enough to protect yourself. Um, if you want to all wear masks, if people are working in the hospital, see, again, where has everyone been, right? If everyone's been quarantined at home you're, and you stay apart from each other, it's fine. But if some people are working and commuting on a train or a bus, or if some people are a healthcare worker and, and have been going to work, they, you, you could do that still, but then you might want to wear a mask, right? So I think that you're probably okay. Um, I read a little bit about gelsolin being used to reduce COVID inflammation. I don't know what that is. Gelsolin. You're going to have to add more to that because I'm not familiar with that. And so um, the list that I gave you is the, the list that's it's been, um, first of all, there's nothing, none of those things I even put on my list have been studied in COVID, right? And so um, it has, it has been studied in COVID. So I don't know anyone that you read a little bit being used to reduce COVID. So I don't know. So, um, so you'll have to clarify. I recommend Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read that book. It was great. I recommend that book as well. Um, that was really good. Oh my God. That was a, that kept me engaged. That was a beach book last. When did I read that? Well, it feels like it was last summer. Um, Healing is Voltage by Jerry Tennant. Thank you. I'm going to write that down. Healing is Voltage. These are good. See, we're building community here. Is Voltage. All right. Um, perfect book for what you want. Okay. The Girl with the Louding Voice. Cool. The Girl with the Louding Voice. Love it. Um, I just finished reading Mrs. Everything. I like that. And I'm now reading something else, but I, um, but I don't remember the name of it. Um, okay. What is the benefit of iodine salt? Iodine salt gives you iodine. Um, you want to make sure you have adequate iodine levels right now, uh, for sure, because um, iodine is actually antibacterial, antiviral. It's it's a sterilizer, right? And so we're supposed to have iodine in our blood. And um, there's actually a doctor named Brownstein who is busy with his whole protocol for treating COVID. He actually goes and I, I forget where he lives. He's somewhere in the West. But he's actually go, going to people, people coming in their cars and he's sticking IVs in them. <laughs> you know, good for him. I, I just wish I was set up like that. He's all gowned up and he gives people IVs out of their cars in his back of his office space. But Bre Dr. Brownstein is a big iodine guy. He does all the iodine lectures when I go to integrative conferences and he believes in really high dose iodine. But iodine is a great antiviral. Like, and people, like even, even if you want to use a neti pot and you want to you know, rinse your nasal sinuses if you're being exposed in an ongoing way. Like you don't need to do this unless you have exposure. So these kinds of things where you aggressively want to rinse your body of any or, or of any viral exposure, that's where putting iodine in the neti pot comes in. You know, a neti pot is that those nasal rinses. Um, and so if you're having ongoing exposure or healthcare work, or you want to be doing like rinsing and cleaning off your body, you know, to make sure you're getting any virus that might, you might be contaminated with. Um, when you come home. Um, anyway, iodized salt is good for your thyroid because you need iodine for your thyroid. But iodine in general and good iodine levels are good for you at a time that you want to, you know, as an antiviral strategy. Book recommendations, Say Nothing by P. Keith. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to go back and read all these. I'm not going to write them down now, but that looks really good. Oh, thank you. So everybody, um, if you wrote it to all attendees, so if you're going to give a book recommendation, make sure you're sending it to all attendees as well. Um, so anyone who wants to look on the list, people are posting books to read. Um, yes. Uh, what information do you have about the rise of Kawasaki children? I sort of answered that. I wish I had more information for you about it. Maybe next week I'll have more. Um, right now, like I said, it's the virus is somehow um, dam causing inflammation of the blood vessels, and it shows up in the especially in the heart. But, um, but some kids are getting, this is their, their manifestation of, of, of their, their COVID illness. Um, 
The Path of Practice, that's another book. Thank you, Sharon. Um, if one is tested and comes back positive or negative for the virus, does your identity go to your state for quarantine monitoring or is one's identity protected under HIPAA? Um, your positive test is reported. Uh, it, it's, you're definitely gonna be reported to the state. Um, that being said, right now, I, I, it would be nice that anybody's doing any tracing. Case, it's called case and contact tracing. If you haven't been contacted by the government to say, if you're positive and no one's contacted you to say who to question you about who you've been in contact with, then, then it, there's nobody home that's doing it right now. So in ideally, if we had a really good public health system uh, running in all of our states where each of us are living who are listening, uh, yes, your name would be given to the state and they would contact you and then they would ask you questions about where you've been. Um, this is, I don't know if you remember, oh no, maybe this wasn't our thing, but I, I did a webinar um, on public health, the, like the very first week this all started. And there's this balance, and actually we're seeing this play out in our country, and maybe this is where your question's going. Personal liberties, privacy protection, leave me alone, you can't get in, in my way, you know, I'm, I'm my individual rights versus the right of the, in a public health crisis, the right the public. So safety of the public and personal rights. This dynamic and this back and forth and this sort of um, issue and conflict has been at the heart of, a, of public health for 100 years, okay, and longer. It's always been how far the government can infringe on your personal liberties. And in times of public health crisis, you move to the left. So if the line is in the middle where, you know, personal rights and, and public and, and the health of the public you know, and we try to walk this line in the middle. But during a public health crisis, you drift over. And you end up necessarily infringing on personal liberties. And so this is where you're seeing the demonstrations of people. And I'm not saying that's what you're asking in that question. But that's, it's just a conversation because it's all on the same spectrum. People are like, don't make me be locked up in my house. You can't do that to me. You're infringing on my personal liberties, right? And reporting your name automatically, if you're positive, is going to impinge on your privacy. And somebody's gonna know that you are positive. And that's necessary from the public health perspective because somebody needs to call you and question you about all the people you've been in contact with because, and make sure you're quarantined. And so you're giving up some of your personal rights in order to protect all the people around you because you need to be quarantined, if you're positive and we need to make sure you are, that's only fair to everybody around you. And then we need to question you and you need to tell the public health official all the people that you've been in contact with. So yes, my assumption is you're gonna do, a, if you do a COVID test and you're positive, somebody, uh, it, it's definitely going to the state. I don't know where the negatives are going to the state in terms of your name, but the positive definitely will. Um, what organization are you involved in or head of that you mentioned about the supplements with the research behind it? IFM, yeah, I'm not, I'm, in, I'm involved in, I'm not the head of. Um, I've just been working with that organization for 20 years. I just, um, you know, there's just a whole group of us that are thought, thought of as thought leaders, not faculty. You know, I'm not, in, uh, but I'm involved with them definitely. You know, I help write things for them. I teach in their conferences sometimes. Um, Institute for Functional Medicine functionalmedicine.org is the name of the organization and they I'm certified by them and all my they do all the training for functional medicine docs and the faculty took it upon themselves to to organize and release for us practitioners who are certified practitioners and to publish for us um, you know all reviews of all the supplements and how much to recommend and what to recommend and that's that's what I put forth for all of you okay Zinc's on my list. Did we miss, did you not see that? Zinc was on the um, third slide for, no, zinc is on the antiviral slide. Zinc was there, yeah. Um, if my mother had gastro distress, maybe IBS, what vitamin C should you take? What is buff, buffered C mixed? Yes, okay. So a uh, question about vitamin C. Vitamin C um, can cause loose stools, right? It definitely can affect the bowels. Um, too much vitamin C can also increase your 
potential of getting a kidney stone. So we don't want you to take too much either. So if you have IBS or you have kidney stones, I say stick with only a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. Don't go too high. You definitely want to do buffered. Buffered will help you um, not upset your stomach. Okay, so buffered vitamin C, because otherwise vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is a, if you just take plain ascorbic acid, it's very acidic. And so, which is one of the reasons why it can promote kidney stones, because too much acid in the body can cause kidney stones. So buffered vitamin C helps reduce the amount of acid that you get with it. I would also say don't do the powdered vitamin C if you have stomach issues, because it can, it can end up, I think it has an effect on loosening the stools, a little more. If you are constipated, um, powdered vitamin C is fantastic. So I do think um, doing powdered vitamin C up to three grams a day, really good for helping with constipation. Um, I took zinc and elderberry two times a day, had a weakness show up, had a weakness. I don't know what that means. So I took kiwi each day and it disappeared. What is a good dose to avoid the weakness? I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know what weakness you're talking about. So the dose for zinc, I would stick with just zinc 30 milligrams. You shouldn't need to go higher than that. If you think you had any side effect from zinc, just stick with 30 total in all of your supplements. Um, I gave you the dose of elderberry before, but um, you know you might wanna cut the dose in half and see what that is. So I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by weakness. My sis gets GI upset regularly. Her stress is increased with COVID. Then she doesn't eat, which doesn't help her MS. How can we both have enough vitamins to stop her GI upset? Um, well, that's a personal question. It's, a, it's sort of a, you need a personalized answer to that. I, um, you know, um, so what I would say is you're a perfect candidate for one of you doing an immune consult. Spend 45 minutes with one of our functional medicine practitioners and they'll review that with you and they'll help you figure that out. Um, that's too specific for me to help you with. Um, check of typo and curcumin, 500. Oops, yep, thank you. Typo, 1,000. So the curcumin's 500 to 1,000 for my arthritis folks and my immune folks, you'll know I often go up to 1,500 milligrams is actually the dose for treating uh, inflammatory arthritis. So you can certainly go higher than that if you wanted to. Does it matter the source of the res resveratrol? Interesting question. As an antioxidant, it really doesn't. Um, there's a source from Japanese knotweed that we use for helping as an antiviral for Epstein-Barr virus. And so Japanese knotweed as a source for resveratrol has been the one that we've been using in our EBV protocols. And so I would say that as an anti, that we could consider it. I'm gonna actually edit that on my list. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. So I would use resveratrol from Japanese knotweed, K-N-O-T, W-E-E-D. Um, that's the one that's been studied in Epstein-Barr. And since it's a virus is a virus, that's the one we should use for this one. Is liposomal neck the best type to take? Um, liposomal net, all the liposomal vitamins are thought to help you absorb them through your gut better, that they penetrate the intestinal lining and get absorbed. So um, I would say it's uh, studies on taking NAC, just regular NAC, have been very clearly shown to increase the total levels of glutathione in the body. So I don't know you have to use liposomal, but if you prefer that formula, then that's fine. Um, liposomal tends to be very expensive. Uh, and so some, some things, um, and so if you can afford it, then fine. But I, I, then liposomal, we like liposomal. So, uh, but I, but it's not necessary if it's, if the expense of all the vitamins are getting too much. Okay. Plain old NAC we know does get through and it does increase, uh, glutathione levels in the body. Are there are hospitals that are treating with these supplements for cytokines. Not that I know of, um, unfortunately, and which is a good point because once you end up in the hospital, um, once you end up in the hospital, you're going to not be able to take your supplements with you. And so a lot of the cytokine storm things, uh, I'm hoping that by taking them, if you get sick and you take them at home, it'll prevent you from ending up in the hospital. But once you're in the hospital, some of them are doing vitamin C and that's it. I was told to get vitamin C with ascorbic acid that doesn't come from China. Um, is that a valid concern? It's hard to find an absorb set that doesn't come from China. Is it okay? So first thing about supplements from China, 
I mean, it might be because of what's going on. We're going to have trouble getting supplements that come from China. So um, we're, we're, we're entering into a huge trade war and other type of political war with China right now. Um, there's a move to try to get everything we can from the States. So probably better to try to get your supplements not from China so that you can they don't get discontinued. Um, there's always been a concern about um, herbs from China in terms of contaminants like lead. Um, we have much stricter controls. And so I actually think you should get all your supplements from the United States. I, I, I suggest not getting them from China or a country that doesn't have, I, my concerns include India, although you can get organic herbs. You can, there are companies that say organic on them, like when it comes to herbs from India, but, um, but stick with the US. We have very uh, good manufacturing processes and, and, and control over what's in those capsules. Is it okay to take curcumin as a lifestyle? Absolutely. I, um, at a reduced level. Yep. I was taking turmeric with black pepper, but you've taught us that curcumin is better. Curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric. So you could take turmeric. Um, and turmeric is the whole plant. It just has curcumin in it. So when we're going at the dosing, you just want to, if we want you to do 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams of curcumin, it's just, you can take turmeric and make sure it has 500 milligrams at least of curcumin in it, right? Does that make sense? It's the active ingredient. Turmeric's the root, the herb, and curcumin is the active ingredient. Um, and so, uh, so just so from a dosing perspective, it's, it's easier to do that. And especially with black pepper, you'll get it absorbed systemically, which is what we want for the antiviral properties for, the, for, the, for in your blood, right? To act as a tonic in your blood, we want it to get absorbed. And so that's why the black pepper or the phosphatidylcholine or you know, curcumin with, an, with a, a, a transport compound that it's, that it's made with. Um, but yes, keep taking it now for prevention, sure. Um, and you can take it 500 a day, and then if you get sick, go up to 1,000. You know, there's ways to just, to just do this, but curcumin is really good. What would you recommend to someone who wants to give up addictive avoidance behavior? Who wants to give up addictive avoidance behavior? I think you're going to have to say more about that. I'm not, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> But if there's anything behavioral that you want, I'll just say as a global answer, if you're struggling with some behaviors that are not helpful, that are not really supporting your best interest and in your health, then you, I would recommend you either, there's two different kinds of people to consult with. Um, one would be uh, Melissa, our health coach, who actually is a, has her master's in psychology. So she's a behaviorist at heart, um, as well as knowing the nutrition piece and the supplement pieces, but she's a behaviorist. So she helps you with your health behavior. And so if this has to do with health behavior and you just want someone to help you with strategies for your health behavior, Melissa's your gal, right? You can call our office or you can schedule uh, through our online platform. You can just schedule a coaching session. It's called Coach Me. And you can schedule a coaching session with her um, at Blum Health MD. Um, <clears throat> if it's a little bit more than that, then, then maybe you can do, uh, find a therapist to start talking to. Right? So therapy is great. And there's cognitive behavior therapy that, that could be really helpful. And that's in the world of therapy. So those would be the ways I would answer if there's some, because somehow it's related to behavior. Um, and behavior is really what does most of us in, right? Is that we all have some behaviors that don't serve us. And that's why I have a full-time health coach who's fabulous, you know, at Blum Center, because um, behavior, you know, often that's what we need the most help with. We know what we need to do and we just can't seem to get it done. Um, all right. Uh, what about tick spraying over the summer out on the eastern end of Long Island? Good question. Um, well, um, I, I don't do tick spraying in, in my backyard. I, I, there are these tick, um, uh, there are these little tuby things that can get put down. Um, so I don't do, I, I don't do tick spraying. Um, but I, but I hear you as a, as an issue, as a potential issue. Um, for the tick spraying, what you can do is it's it, the thing about tick spraying, it's an application that you do periodically. And so I would just, um, you'd have to figure out how long the tick in a high endemic tick area, that's something to consider. Um, but I would remain off the lawn until, um, 
you'd have to read about how long you'd want to stay off the lawn. And it might be like a full week, you know, like you do an application and then you just stay, you know, I don't know how many days it is. It's probably several days. You have to not let the dog or anybody on the lawn. You wait till there's a rain or you water it. You know, you find out, you talk to your tick people, you know, the person who's laying it down and do some reading for yourself about that. And so if it's just a single application or twice in the summer kind of thing, then you can stay off the lawn. Um, I'm talking about regular pesticide and herbicide applications, which happen every week with landscapers, you know? Um, and I would avoid the tick thing if you can. Like, like I said, there's this, um, this little, rather than spraying the whole lawn, there's these little canisters that I know my people put down. So it's a little different. Um, can you go over your thoughts are if some of our family test positive for IgG? Okay, so that's the immune testing. Um, the good news, and this is actually is newish for this year, for this week, sorry, um, is that it's looking like most people that have really the overwhelming majority of people, whether you have a um, um, mild or severe illness, are making antibodies. Good. And they're making good levels of antibodies. And so the assumption is you do have some um, you do have protection. We just don't know how now there's definitely some reports in China of people getting infected again. Um, and the issue with that, we're not sure if it's because they never turned, were negative to begin with and they just were latent for a while and they never cleared their virus to begin with. And so there's some research we have to figure out about that. The other thing is there's a concern that the virus has mutated and there's two strains maybe that's circulating that can explain why some areas of the world are really hit very hard and other areas are not. And people aren't getting as sick as some areas and maybe there are two different versions of the virus. And so we have to make sure that um, if you're immune to one strain, you know, one mutated version, you know, one version that you're immune to them all. So we don't quite know. And so if you're IgG positive, it definitely means you had, you had exposure to the virus, you had it. Um, if you're IgG positive and you know it was a good test that was done, um, you want to, uh, if, if it doesn't make sense to you, if no one you know had it, if no one, you didn't get sick, everyone was asymptomatic, you have no reason to believe you should have been uh, antibody positive, you might want to get a second test to reconfirm before you let yourself out and assume you're, you're um, immune. But if you had, uh, you had it or your spouse had it or someone in your family had it clearly and they were COVID positive or you were, and now you're antibody positive, that's really good news. Chances are you're going to be in good shape and, and immune from getting it again. We don't know exactly though how immune and for how long. And so I'm still telling people to, um, to be careful you know, and to sit tight and still wear a mask when you go out. And, but in your, in your, in your sort of thought process, you know that you, you had it and you're, and you're probably immune. And so you can be, um, you can relax and not being fearful that you're going to get it again um, or give it or, or, you know, or likely give it to someone else. Now, depending on how far out you are from having been sick, um, we don't know that you definitely have cleared all the virus from your system. So you still have to be careful. But, you know, this is again, where if you have personal questions or, you know, um, I know that you know me, so, uh, you know, who asked this question? I see you sent it just to me. You're a patient of mine. We can talk about that specifically for you and your circumstance. And so if you're out there and you're not want a patient of Blum Center, again, you, you're curious, you want to figure out what to do with this information, um, uh, get an immune consult, you know, and we'll help you figure out what it means for you, Okay because it really is a little bit different for everybody, depending on your circumstances. But the good news is, if you've had antibody testing and you're positive, and if you've had COVID, you're probably, it's all likely you will be positive to antibodies. You're gonna have some sort of immunity, we just don't know how much. So for now, continue doing your same precautions for the most part. Um, what would you recommend to, oh wait, wait, can you, the, what about tick spraying? We talked about that. Can we buy all the supplements that you put on that you put on both the lists. Okay, question. Can you buy every single one of those things? I don't think you really should. You don't need to rev up your immune system that much. I tell people pick six, you know, like I think six is a good number. I don't think you need to take more than that, at least for prevention. If you get sick, then you can layer on the anti more of the antiviral things, right? So, so like I said, some of those things that are antiviral, like licorice, 
I don't think you need to take licorice now and you don't really want to take it forever, right? Licorice is a good short term kind of thing to go straight antiviral for you. Um, and so, and so some of those things, I don't think you need to add on until maybe you start with six and across all the categories, and then you can add more if you want. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know that you need to take every single thing on that list. And if you do take everything, then maybe the dosing doesn't need to be as much, right? Because everything's synergistic. So if you decide to do quercetin and EGCG, then maybe you don't need as much of both, right? And those are antiviral and decrease the inflammasone, which are great. But it's a lot of supplements that take all of them. And I don't want anybody to leave here thinking they have to. If you want to, then you might not need the full dose of everything. And the other, th and again, you might, you know, this is good prevention. And then you might want to leave some room to step things up if you happen to get sick. Okay. Um, a webinar this week also recommended luteolin, a supplement I'm not familiar with to inhibit furin, which I've never heard of. So luteolin is a really good um, kind of a, it's a, it's a phytonutrient. It's, it's like a cousin of lutein. It's a kind of beta carotene. Okay. So it's a kind of vitamin A. And so if you're eating tons of um, antioxidants and colors in your vegetables, you're going to get luteolin in your food. You don't need to just take each supplement separately. Right, and so um, luteolin is is a form of a um, uh, it's a form of a carotenoid, I believe. Now I could have that wrong, but it's definitely a phytonutrient from plants. Um, are there supplements that don't work well with Hashimoto's? I've heard elderberry and echinacea should be avoided. No, that's not true. Um, well, I take that back. If you have autoimmunity and your immune system. Um, and you're concerned about revving up parts of your immune system, then you do want to be a little wary of, and I'm the one who talked about echinacea um, and uh, for immune boosting properties. And so you can see, I didn't actually put echinacea on the list, the other list. So, so sticking with the antiviral are really good. You don't have to worry about immune, if the, the autoimmunity in terms of the antiviral piece. Um, the inflammasome supplements, antiviral inflammasome, those are all good. And then sticking with the straight, um, it's really about the mushrooms, right? If you have a, an autoimmune disease, whether to perhaps hold off on too many of those natural killer, strong natural killer boosters, which is really where the, where the mushrooms come in. Um, elderberry is probably on that list as well of the strong natural killer boosters. And so um, those, so perhaps those would be, and, and maybe echinacea. So, so stick with, so thank you for bringing that up. And actually, I, I got to remember to add that to the blog um, as I'm writing, finishing up the blog when we hang up. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, autoimmune folks, if you have autoimmunity, we talked about this last time. Um, the lupus folks, people with an ANA and uh, rheumatic diseases, you're good taking natural killer boosters. Everyone else, um, you know, you know, you might not want to go overboard with uh, the thing, with the natural killer boosters, like I have listed on the list, um, especially the herbal stuff. Um, okay, um, where am I? Um, what foods offer good vitamin A? Vitamin A is the preformed. Vi so vitamin A, the one that I gave you the dosing for, is preformed vitamin A, and you can't get that unless you eat like liver right? You can't, you actually, a cod liver oil has preformed vitamin A. Um, when you eat vitamin A, it's called beta carotene and your body takes the beta carotene, which is in every, all the colorful foods are all beta carotene, a carrots, the orange, and um, you, you eat beta carotene and your body takes it and makes vitamin A out of it. There's a conversion that has to happen. And so for viral illnesses, I've used, so preformed vitamin A in really high doses, is a great antiviral, you know, or when you, when you get sick, it's, a, it's, a, it just it ramps things up right away. Um, IFM didn't write that they, their study showed vitamin A had antiviral properties, but I, in my past research, I always read that to be true as well as vitamin C. And so, um, if you're going to supplement the vitamin A, like I'm recommending, it's preformed vitamin A, and you never take that if you're pregnant. Um, pregnancy, and if you have any medical conditions, you know, you really, and taking medication, you really want to take these under your advice from your doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice here, okay? Always check with your doctor 
And if you're pregnant, absolutely don't follow anything I'm telling you. Um, in Florida, exterminators are very common to keep roaches out. What do you do for roaches? Um, I would try to opt for traps, you know, instead of spraying. It's really just about going around with the spray because that, that exposes you to those chemicals. And so traps would be better. Um, and there might be other things for you to look online and try to figure out a more holistic way for you to deal with the, the pests in your house. But I, I understand, I, we get, with the ants come marching in here in the spring. Um, can, is it true that if you go into cytokine storm, you're already in sepsis? Cytokine storm and sepsis are two different things. Um, do you, sepsis means that, um, so I'm not sure that that's true. Sepsis, the, the term sepsis has been previously always used for a bacterial infection in your blood. So a blood infection. Um, so if we're taking sepsis here to mean that the virus is traveling through your bloodstream already, um, that makes sense to me that I, I didn't read that they've confirmed that everybody in cytokine storm has sepsis or that if you have sepsis, if the virus is in your blood, you have cytokine storm or, but it makes sense that, um, you know, that if you have a lot of, not everybody has the virus circulating widely in their blood. And so for people who have it circulating widely in the blood, it makes sense that they would be more prone to overwhelming systemic cytokine storm. Yeah. Um, do you know the percentage of patients that recover from cytokine storm? Maybe you already talked about it, but does the ventilators cause more harm and mortality? Um, yeah, that's a big topic and it's, it's, we're running out of time really, maybe for me to talk about that. Maybe we'll put that on our list to talk about first next time, next week. Um, it's really the question about the debate about the ventilator settings and whether or not um, the kind of lung damage is really that we thought it was, is it's really different. And I think that, uh, I think we've moved into another phase of treatment where people are using different ventilator settings. And that it might be that at the beginning of the pandemic, that the settings we were using were causing more damage than good. And I think there is a discussion now about that. Now that we've learned that the kind of damage in the lungs is not what we thought it was. And that it might be the blood vessels, it might be thrombus. Now we're treating everybody with blood thinners. And, um, and it seems to me, I don't know we have the data on it yet, but I think that there's been a change in the way they're treating people on the ventilators. And, um, and probably a lot of people, by the time they get into the hospital, they are in cytokine storm. So really, because that's when they sort of drop and the oxygenation goes down and people get really sick, you know, um, and present to the hospital. Um, I haven't seen any studies yet or any data, you know, that's really helping us know whether or not um, uh, how we're doing now in terms of statistically to reduce mortality from people who have come into the hospital. But I will tell you that I just, um, I, you know, I will tell you that the death rates have gone, well, actually I can't tell you because we have no idea how many people um, are testing positive in the community and not going to the hospital and dying at home. So we don't really know yet. So we will have data though about for those who come to the hospital, how we're doing now versus how we did before and as, this, as the pandemic goes on. So stay tuned for those kind, that kind of information. Um, can you share what chemical you mentioned last week you use for your hot tub? Oh, um, I use uh, bromide instead of chloride. Um, I trust it's best you found where it, it, it is absorbed somewhat, but we are using bromide, although um, I think I've really um, gotten away. I'm trying to remember if I've managed to find a way to get away from that too. There's a way to filter your hot tub where you ultraviolet light the water. You cycle it through some ultraviolet tubes. So I definitely do do that. And then I only, and that will kill, that will kill bacteria. Um, but the water still needs to be, then you can lower the amount of treatment you need for the water. So definitely my water doesn't smell like any chemicals anymore. Um, but, and I did use bromide, but I, I might have, I think it's potassium something or other um, that we're using, but, but bromide is still a better choice than chloride. Um, I think it's absorbed less and it's less toxic to the body, but it still can go up into the thyroid. So um, all the halides are, are of concern. Um, all right, is it, uh, can you share the chemical? The news in New York City said that a higher portion of illness was in retired and folks at home. What do you think this is attributed to? Okay, so that's, that is interesting information. There is, um, 
uh, the new people that have been presenting in New York City, the new uh, positive cases, have been people that have been quarantining at home. What we don't know yet, and this is the only way we're going to find out, um, those people have been home. But I think we're going to find out, as with the investigation as it unfolds, we're going to find out that those people might have been home, but they're sharing a household with people who are, are going into the hospitals or working, or there's some sort of exposure they've had in their home. And so uh, until the investigation really looks at each person, so they're going to have to study that, which will be so interesting, right? What, what, how did they get exposed? And so there's an exposure there. And my guess is they're sharing a house with somebody who exposed them. And so, um, and so stay tuned. We're going to have more information on that soon enough. Um, uh, oh, good. So, so somebody posted, Sue posted some other uh, phrases to repeat in the morning. Thank you for sharing that. Um, do you recommend golden milk? Great. Uh, don't use milk though. You can use golden milk. You can use almond milk. It's with, it's, it's just drinking curcumin, turmeric. And um, some of it will get absorbed, which is great. But the other that will work in the gut is great for your gut immune system. So curcumin as an herb is a great thing to take. So 100% recommend it. Uh, more book suggestions for those of you. Oh, you just sent it to panelists. So um, I'm going to post this up here for you guys. Copy. Oh, wait. Let me see if I can copy that. Oh, nope, it's not letting me. Um, it just went to panelists, but it's Shadow of the Wind. Um, will sweep you into a world of its own, full of mystery. Great. You know, I'll see if I could find a way to make a list for you guys and, um, and post it somewhere. Okay, I'll go through these later. Um, what is the pathophysiology of the effect on oxygen deprivation to the blood or the hemoglobin or more? Um, or the hemoglobin... Um, Sorry, that's going to be outside. You know, um, most, I don't know that we know um, why, but I think we can, we are coming to understand that there's some problem with oxygen deprivation. I, so far from what I understand, it's, it's problems of capillary. I haven't read anything, the capillaries in the pulmonary, um, you know, the smallest capillaries in the lungs, um, so that the blood goes through the lungs and can't pick up oxygen. And so I think that that's the most, um, first thoughts about that. Uh, there's still, I haven't read anything more after last week about whether or not um, the virus is doing damaging the red blood cells in any way. So stay tuned on that one. I haven't read any more. For now, I really do believe there's something there about that the blood isn't able to come through the lungs and pick up oxygen. And it's on the blood side. You know, it's sort of little, little clotting off of all the little tiny capillaries. Um, so general, general advice says to stay home if you're sick. How do we know when to seek medical attention considering so many of the probable severe conditions are treatable? Um, how to get masks and gloves. Um, you can get masks and gloves now online. So I found them. I just ordered like 800 for my office. Um, I think that my suggestion would be to get a pulse oximeter. Um, it's one of the, I just got mine in the mail. It actually just came. I ordered it to my house from the internet. Um, you stick your finger in, it tells you your oxygen levels. And so if it's really about if your oxygen levels start dropping. That's when you know you need to go to the hospital. Um, and so that's, nor, you know, and so the question is, how low do you want it to, before it drops a certain point? Would you want to go? I don't really know that number. I think we talked about that last week. I got to look that up so I can recommend that for you next week. How low O2 sat before hospital? So that's something to sort of look around on the internet. How low should my oxygen saturation go before I go to the hospital? But you, first you have to get something to measure it. So, so I think measuring your um, oxygen saturation is critical if you get sick. And that's the single best thing you could follow to follow how you're doing. And so order um, an oxygen, it's a little, it's called a pulse, P-U-L-S-E, oximeter. And so you can order one of those online. Um... Can we, or, can we buy the supplements you put on both lists from the Blum Center? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, pretty much I have everything there. Um, I, the quercetin, they're just in a supplement. I just have to tell the staff which ones to recommend. But um, Blum Center, but the other thing you can do is you can go into our, uh, the full script. Um, we can help you log into full script online and you can definitely get everything there. And so I'm gonna post how to log into full script 
because you need to go in through a practitioner uh, account in order to get in there. And um, you can definitely email my office or call them to get into to get to figure out how to get into full script as well. So we can just call my office. We'll help you figure it out. Okay. Um, can you recommend a brand of resveratrol? Um, just Google resveratrol Japanese knotweed. I'm trying to remember the one I have. I think it's from orthomolecular, the one that we're using. That's the Japanese knotweed. What supplement or something else? Oh, we're running out of time. What supplement or something else would you recommend to heal laryngeal reflux? Um, yeah. So um, if you're having laryngeal reflux, um, my favorite thing, well, first of all, you have to figure out why you're having reflux. And so you need an elimination diet to get rid of the reflux. So you have to work with food. I think if you have reflux and you need help figuring out how to get rid of it, just taking a supplement is not going to help you. You need a food plan and some supplements. I would suggest a coaching session with Melissa. It's not expensive. Okay. Easiest place to start. Okay. Um, but we use things like glute, glutamine aloe licorice, you know, glutagenics powders to drink. But I'll tell you from personal experience, unless you figure out what foods are giving you that reflux, you're, you can take medicine or anything till the cows come home and you're not going to get better. Benefits of iodine versus pink Himalayan salt. Pink Himalayan salt doesn't have iodine. So there's no, um, no you know, you, you can take pink Himalayan salt and just take an iodine supplement every day. Just make sure there's iodine in your multi. But you need to take iodine somehow, okay? Um, the Alchemist, oh yeah, that's a good read. Thank you, I read that a long time ago. Do you have to be selective in iodized salt? It's really hard to find good iodized salt. So I will admit that right now. So instead of iodized salt, make sure you're getting iodine. You can get kelp flakes. I was in the store looking for iodized salt and it's all bleached and all the healthy, great Himalayan pink salts are none of them have iodine. So I, I would recommend um, uh, if you can't find a good quality iodized salt, which is really hard to find, um, then go ahead and just get use your healthy real salt or Himalayan pink salt and make sure you're getting iodine though every day in your multi, um, or in an iod or a multi mineral, or you you just or kelp flakes, you know, or seaweed, you know, you have to get iodine every day somehow. Um, another book, Believers by Lisa Ko. Um, thank you. How can you find an oximeter online? Could you speak to seasonal allergies? Um, no, not really. Sorry, I'm not gonna. Oh, this way too many questions. Okay, sorry. We're gonna to have to sort of wrap up. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about allergies. I'm just gonna talk about straight things that are on this topic to try to get to those things. Um, <clears throat> ah, let me just see. Seasonal allergies, um, the symptoms are different than COVID. Um, you know what your seasonal allergy symptoms are. And so if you don't have a fever and don't get really sick, then it's probably your seasonal allergy. Some, you know, you can read all the COVID symptoms and you know what your allergy symptoms are. They're definitely different. Is collagen supplement still okay in this environment? Yes, it's still good. Um, I'm a holistic practitioner in Connecticut. Could I get a list of the functional medicine lab that you use? You asked me that last time. So um, uh, should, should email someone or call the office and speak to a certain person. You have to just go on my, um, uh, you can go on our website, blumhealthmd.com and just click on the support button and send an email in there. It'll go to Melissa. Okay. Um, should I take liposomal NAC, um, and acetylcysteine? You can take regular NAC or NAC. It doesn't matter. Um, you're welcome. Not sure if I wrote my question in the wrong box. Rereading my arthritis book and intrigued by it said about wormwood treating malaria. That's artemisia. Love artemisia. Probably a stretch, but is there any way wormwood could act like Plaquenil? Um, then for RA, since they both treat malaria. Uh, I have been taking emulsified oregano with GI cleansing herbs, which has wormwood and is really helping recent hand swelling. Um, Artemisia has a lot of different properties to it. Um, I'm not sure it's working the same way Plaquenil is, but I do wonder whether Plaquenil is working because of its antimicrobial activity. And so um, so I really love artemisia. I think it's a good part of the process. And so maybe there's some overlap in how they both work together. Um, recommendations for best butyric acid supplements. Um, I like the one from Apex Energetics. It's called Enterovite, E-N-T-E-R-O-V-I-T-E. -E -E. um, 
so enterovite is a really great but butyrate. Um, I think we discussed already the current antibody test for, for COVID test present antibodies only or past or both. So your antibody test right now for COVID tests you for right now, whether you had COVID. If you're antibody positive, you had it. Um, for right now, we don't know if there are different antibodies. If the, if the virus mutates, we don't know if there's gonna be two different versions of antibodies. Right now, we think there's just one. And so if you're antibody positive, for now, the assumption is you, it's for just this COVID, it's for coronavirus. It means you had it and now you're immune. We don't know what, how much immune, we don't know what that means, how much immune you are, but we know you are immune in some way, okay? You're very welcome. Um, you're very welcome. Is there a problem with taking zinc if you have psoriasis? No, zinc is actually good for the skin. No problem. Went to rise from my chair later in the day and needed much help, took zinc for a few days. The website's red muscle weakness is caused by too much zinc. Found kiwi is a source of copper. Oh, thank you for saying that. Okay. So that's a really good point. Okay. Zinc, if you take, um, so the amount of zinc that I'm telling you to take or the 30 milligrams, you know, we're telling everyone to take zinc, but zinc and copper get absorbed the same way. So if you, if for the next, I don't want you to take a ton of zinc only for the next year, right? So this is good for now because eventually you can give yourself a copper deficiency. So this is why in some ways it's good to take a multi-mineral. And actually I'm taking zinc right now as a multi-mineral. Um, it's LDA minerals. I'm pretty sure it has copper in it, but you can take it, it. We're in a multivitamin. So it's 30 milligrams of zinc, two milligrams of copper, and it has a little iodine. And that's why in a lot of ways you can just take a really good multivitamin that has zinc and a little copper and iodine. And then we answer all the questions you guys asked me today, okay? You don't have to take a separate zinc supplement. It's best to take zinc with a little copper. All right. Um, and so now I get that. All right. An accurate brand, and I don't sell the pulse. Sorry, I ordered it from the internet. So I have no, I can't help you with the pulse oximeter um, or a brand. I get my supplements from the US, but they absorb the ascorbic acid used in them comes from China. Oh, okay. So what'll happen as long as you get your supplement in the US, even if an ingredient comes from China, if it's a good company that is GMP certified, good manufacturing process certified products, certified, they're certifying everything that's in their supplement. So you're gonna trust the company you're buying in the US if it's GMP certified company, that it's vetting all their, that they've tested all of their supplements, that they, all their, their ingredients that they're using. So if it comes from China through, um, if the ingredient comes from China, then you'll trust the company. So make sure you're choosing a top shelf supplement company that's GMP certified. Um, does the antibody tell, blah, 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 blah. If one gets the weak COVID, does it protect them from the other one? We don't. We still don't know there were two kinds of COVID, Monica. So don't worry about it. What can I do for tendonitis in both upper arms? That's too big a question for here. Um, suspect that my mom had COVID and is now asymptomatic, but is still experiencing major brain fog. Don't know how to answer that. That's too. We don't know that the brain fog's from that or what's now going on for her. I would get your mom an immune consult with Elizabeth or with Pam um, to try to figure out, you know, what's going on for her. Please put up the antiviral list again before ending. Thanks. If one uses Himalayan salt, is iodine supplement necessary? Um, yes, I answered that. Would Shrogan's be included in being okay to take natural killer boosters? Yes, it would be. Um, Shrogan's is part of the uh, rheumatic diseases. Um, baking soda for roaches, there you go. There's always an answer, okay? Does your office offer IV vitamin boosters? We're just talking about reopening the IV program. I'd be interested in knowing whether you guys would want the IV program open and whether you'd want to come, right? We're trying to figure out when and if and when to reopen it. You know, you have, we're going to put, we put one person in each room and figure out a way to social distance, but right now we're not open. Um, so the new happy hypoxia that people don't know they have, they said 90%. Okay. So below 90%, it looks like that's when you need to go to the hospital, but I would confirm that and I'll confirm that for you too. Um, 
how much iodine should I take a day? The generally 200 micrograms is sort of the minimum <clears throat> recommended dose. Um, people arrive at the hospital with 50% oxygen, it creeps up on them, which is why you want to, to have the pulse ox so you can know if you drop below 90, you need to go to the hospital. Um, okay, how do, oh great, how do you test for iodine? Last question. I don't do the patch test, I don't think it's reliable. 24-hour um, urine for iodine, and that's how, you, that's how you measure if you're sufficient in iodine. It's a urine test you can do through Quest or LabCorp. We're done, it's 12.30 on the dot. Oh my goodness, um, I'm not gonna be able to put the, um, the viral slide up, but go look on the website, okay? My blog, I'm gonna update it by the end of the day. BlumHealthMD.com, you just go to the blog, okay? And there's a blog, click, click on it, and you'll see my updated, um, you can always search for supplements, you just scroll down the past blogs, but mine's gonna be updated, it should be right on the top. Have a great week, I'll see you all next week. Um, <clears throat> feel free to send in questions to me in advance. Although I don't know how you would do that. You'd probably have to do it through the support button on Blum Health MD. So you can go to blumhealthmd.com and there's a little support button on the bottom. And you can just say, submitting this question for Dr. Blum's next week class. All right, don't email me, please. Don't send me a direct email. Send it in through Melissa that way, okay? Have a great week. I will see you all very soon.